The Green Book series provides standardized connection details and resistances for connections in steel-framed buildings. In most cases, once the steel members have been designed and the connection force calculated, connections can be simply selected from the Green Book with no further calculation. The Green Book on simple joints covers the connections found in braced frames. Other publications in the Green Book series cover composite connections and moment-resisting connections. The Green Book series are known as industry standards, so standardized details with agreed design procedures developed in collaboration with researchers, designers and steelwork contractors to produce economic, capable details. The Green Books are referenced in the UK National Annex to EC3, which is a measure of their authority in the industry. Simple joints are nominally pinned, so frames in simple construction would need to be braced to resist lateral loads and to provide stability, either by bracing systems or perhaps by some form of core. In this very common form of construction, the beams are designed as pin-ended and the columns are designed based on the moments from nominal eccentricities. The range of connections covered by the Green Book include beam-to-column connections, both to universal sections and hollow sections, beam-to-beam -beam connections, splices and bases. Guidance is also given on bracing connections. Although simple in name, simple joints do need some special characteristics to deliver the assumed behaviour. They must be ductile, which means they must rotate without any brittle behaviour, have low moment capacity and low stiffness. Of course, they must carry the vertical forces, but usually of equal importance is the tying resistance when considering the robustness requirements for buildings. The Green Book incorporates all of these requirements in a series of standardized connections with tabulated design resistances. This is a typical beam-to-column connection, in this case to a universal column section. The connection to the flange uses a partial depth end plate, while the connections to the web are formed with fin plates. Fin plates comprise a simple plate welded to the supporting member, with one or two vertical rows of bolts. The supported beam is simply drilled and the beam connected on site. Partial depth end plates generally have a high shear resistance but are rather less capable when resisting tying forces. Partial depth end plates comprise a relatively thin plate welded to the web of the supported beam. The flexibility of the connection comes from the bending of the end plate itself. To accommodate larger tying forces, the latest Green Book also includes full depth end plates which provide a significantly higher tying resistance while still behaving as a nominal pin. Partial depth end plates comprise a relatively thin plate welded to the web of the supported beam. The flexibility of the connection comes from the bending of the end plate itself. Full depth end plates are also welded to the flanges of the beam. If we take an example as a 457 by 191 by 67 in S355 steel, with an end reaction of 400 kilonewtons and the tying force equal to the end shear. A partial depth end plate delivers a vertical resistance of 455 kilonewtons with four bolt rows and 564 kilonewtons with five rows. In tying, the resistances are 374 kilonewtons and 465 kilonewtons respectively, so a partial depth end plate with five rows would be adequate. The tables indicate the critical check, which for vertical shear is check 4. This can be identified as the resistance of the web of the beam and the detailed design step located if necessary. The tables also give details of the plates and welds for each connection. All of the connection geometry is standardized and given in the tables. A further important value, though hardly ever critical, is the minimum support thickness. This minimum thickness ensures that bolt bearing in the supporting member is not critical. A full depth end plate has a higher vertical shear resistance as the web of the supported beam is no longer critical. In this case, the vertical shear resistance has increased to 753 kilonewtons for five rows of bolts. More significant is the tying resistance, which has increased to 605 kilonewtons, showing the benefit of the full depth end plate. Beam connections to hollow sections are also covered in the Green Book. In this instance, 
all the connections are formed with fin plates, but connections to hollow sections can also be formed with end plates and proprietary blind fixings into the hollow section. The fin plates are welded to the supporting member, and the beam is simply cut and drilled. The flexibility of the connection comes from bearing deformation in the fin plate or beam web. Fin plates have a high resistance to tying forces. For the same 457 by 191 by 67 beam, a fin plate with a single row of five bolts has a shear resistance of 383 kN and a tying resistance of 535 kN, demonstrating that a fin plate has an excellent resistance in tying. If more resistance is required, a fin plate with a double row of bolts may be used. Once again, the critical checks are identified and all the detailing information for the connection is tabulated. Secondary beams are often supported by primary beams, as shown in this example. The connections may be made with flexible end plates, or more commonly, as shown here, the connection is formed with fin plates. This means that the supported beams only have to be cut and drilled, and as can be seen, have the top flange notched. In a braced frame, columns are often spliced, reducing the section size over the upper stories. The splice shown is a bearing type, which means that the axial load is transferred by direct bearing between the two columns, with a division plate if different column sizes are connected. The cover plates, which may be external or internal, serve to provide continuity of stiffness and a tensile tying resistance. The details are all standardized, using standard bolts and setting out. The splices in the green book are all bearing type, so the design resistance is the tensile resistance of the cover plates, which is needed when considering tension due to any nominal moments, but also when calculating the resistance of the splice to a vertical tying force. The standardized details have been arranged to provide a reasonable continuity of stiffness across the connection. Bases in a braced frame will be nominally pinned, subject to axial compression only, although those in the bracing system will also be subject to a horizontal shear. Base details are generally a simple plate with four holding down bolts outside the perimeter of the column. This holding down arrangement provides some stability during erection. Neither the plate nor the column need to be milled. A sawn cut end to the column is perfectly acceptable. The green book provides axial capacities for various sizes and thicknesses of base plate for various grades of concrete. For a given column and axial load, the designer simply needs to select a detail with an adequate capacity. No calculation is needed. The great benefit of the green book is the standardized connections, which follow agreed design rules, demonstrate good detailing practice, and are accepted by all parts of the design community. For the standard connections, the designer merely has to select a standard detail with adequate resistance for the design case rather than undertake calculations. If for some reason detailed calculations are needed, for example for a non-standard connection, full design checks are presented and numerical worked examples for each connection type. So it's clear that the Green Book on Simple Joints is an invaluable design aid. It gives you not only detailed design guidance, but also the comprehensive lookup tables of standardized connections. It makes your life easier and speeds design work.